bem-vindos a mais um Sonoridades. Hoje o papo é com o Extreme, o fundador do disco Six, entre outras novidades. O papo foi gravado um pouco antes do Best of Blues, então vocês vão ver que tem perguntas sobre o festival. E sendo que foi um pouquinho rápida, porque os caras estavam acelerados para vir para o Brasil, então confiram, curtam, compartilhem. <música> Thanks so much for this opportunity. Oh, you're welcome. Lo looking forward to the conversation. Yeah. The first album I bought in my entire life was Extreme Three Sides of Story. Is that true? Yeah. I, I don't still believe you. I don't believe you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I still have it on CD, you know. Okay. The, the yellow one with a yellow and silver. I play it a lot. And then they, someone stole me and I bought another one because I love the CD. So... Uh. Thank you. <laughs> I started play drums because of the CD. Wow. Yeah. So guys, can we start? Absolutely. Okay. So thanks so much for this opportunity. It's a great pleasure to talk with you. Um, you are coming back to Brazil to play on Best of Blues. So what are, the, are your expectations? What can you spoil of this? I don't want to, I don't want to give too much information. Um, We're looking forward to this festival. Uh, I was lucky enough to play it last year with, uh, with Joe Perry. And what I remember uh, um, from the show, I mean, the production was great. The audience was fantastic. And uh, I saw a lot of extreme fans out there. So one of the things, one of the things uh, uh, I was hoping for is to someday come back with the band. And I didn't think it was going to happen this year, but uh, we're excited about it, especially because we have new material, new music coming out that I can share that we'll, we'll be doing some of the singles that we've released in the past couple of months. So we're excited. <laughs> Six is an amazing album. As so far, we heard at least three singles: yeah. uh, "Rise," "Banshee," and "Rebel." So we, each single has its own vibe, its own, its own groove. I can I can say that. So I, I how how do you see the reaction of the people of the media? People love Nuno Solo. So what can you say about it? Uh, look, I mean, I, we're obviously, we were, you know, whenever we do an album, you know, we don't, we don't, you know, uh, what's the word? We, we're pretty confident and we're always going for blood and we, we always imagine that it's going to do well and people are going to love it because we put everything into it. But we have to say in the first 24, 48 hours, I think we're all a bit shocked, you know, uh, pleasantly surprised that, you know, back in the 1900s for, for somebody to let you know they love the album, you would have to tour for six or eight months and then see how ticket sales go, see if radio's playing the song, see if the song climbs the charts, uh, you know, uh, album sales. Now, you know, you hit the space bar, you post something, the whole world can hear it just like that. And they let you know right away whether they love you, hate you, not interested. So I think we were kind of overwhelmed and, uh, you know, pleasantly surprised and excited of how the reaction for Rise was because, You know, um, I, I think, you know, when, 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 when your phone starts, it, it reminded us of kind of back in the porn graffiti days when people were reaching out to you. You're, when you have your brothers and your cousins and, and guitar players and musicians you know and people you haven't spoken to since high school are emailing you and texting you and you're getting texts and emails from some of your heroes, you know, like Brian May and, and Steve Vai and they're telling you, hey, man, you know, congratulations, this is incredible, the song's incredible, the video and... You know, when it came to the solo, I, I was thinking to myself, I was like, okay, you know, watching these react me and Gary watching reaction videos, you know, and all, all these things going on and we're getting links after link after link. It just didn't, it didn't stop for a month. So 
for me as a guitar player, I was, you know, thinking about it and I'm like, wait a second, you know, like these guys are saying Nuno has raised the bar and the solos are, he's the guy now. And I'm thinking, wait, I've been doing this stuff for 30, like, you know, I, I remember even the technique on Rise. I was like, you know, one of the fans it was really great. The comments were amazing, but one of the fans was like, really, everybody? He was doing that on three sides on Peacemaker Die, you know, that kind of stuff, you know. But what I think, I think after getting all that information, especially it was, I, I realized that the guitar solo and the reaction to the song showed me something about what was happening now or about what was not happening now. I think we were rock and roll. And, and if you think about it, uh, you know, especially from our generation, of course, there's great bands out there now and doing it in five finger death punch and great guitar players, but it's a different genre, right? So I think in, in our, of our era, I think two things. One is that the solo, if you think about how guitar players that are great guitar players at that now, like even some Brazilians out there, Mateus Sassato and all these guys, but how do, how do we discover them and how do we discover their guitar playing? They're sitting in rooms like we are right now. You know, they're sitting in chairs and and every day we follow them and they do amazing things, jaw dropping things. And, you know, we like them, but it's very technical and it's very one dimensional. All of a sudden, a band like Extreme comes comes out with a video and what they're seeing, what they're missing. Yeah, the solo is there, but so is the song. So is the arrangement. So are the harmonies, the performances. Gary is a front man, what we're wearing and, and the way the video is cut. And it's it's. It's really what's been missing, what they're really being excited about. They can talk about the solo all they want, but they're, what they're seeing is the mythology of rock and roll. Like what they've been missing is the mythology, not somebody sitting in a room. Because I guarantee you that if I listen to what management might say or what label might say, and they go, hey, today's world, give them a teaser. You know, do a Twitter, a little 30-second teaser of the guitar solo. I guarantee you that if I sat in a room and I play that exact solo with no band, no video, no music. And I bend a bunch of notes in the beginning by myself and then do a few whammy things. It'd be silly. It, and then play that part at the end. People would go like, yeah, okay, that's, we all know Nuna could play guitar. And then it would be like the moment to be gone. That's it. But if you see it with a song within a song like that, and it's about the rhythm section and it's about the tone of the song, the lyrics of the song, it's the whole package. That's what reminded everybody, you know, how why they were watching this thing. And yeah, the solo is a decent solo. The song is a decent song, but I'm telling you, the other videos even proved it, even proved my theory and our theory even more. Nobody believed after what happened with Rise that Banshee was even going to pass that. And Banshee was even more cultural and more rock and roll and more blues based. And I think it showed more of Gary's as a performer and a front man and, and our harmonies and all of that. So I, I, the exciting part of it is that, yeah, there's some great guitar playing. But what's more exciting is the whole package, is that people, I, I think, have been reminded of what they're missing. And it was a big bitch slap, I think, you know, of rock and roll to just go like, hey, this is seeing a band that's passionate, a guitar player that's passionate about it, what he does, you know, uh, is. And the album reflects that. I mean, when, when you know, when Gary and I play the album, in its entirety to our people that we respect, people, our close friends, musicians. I, I, I know I, I went into a studio and I sat with like Tom Morello and Steve Vai and some of my heroes and sent things to Brian May. When you're that confident and that excited about sharing something and the biggest comment that they had was the same thing. It was like, yeah, we know you guys are great. We know you guys can do this. We, you know, we know you can play. But the comment they said was, wow, it's so great and refreshing to hear a full album from the front to bottom with a band that cares enough about curating an album again, not just playlisting, not just a single to get on Spotify, do whatever, like really go back to where it started, where you can put a pair of headphones on, you can go for a drive and it's 50 minutes of just an escape, you know, that's it. Yeah. And I can't add yeah. to that. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> and Nuno was talking about Benchy on Benchy, the, 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 your, your voice was high praised by, by all the people. And I mean, what's the secret? <laughs> you, you know what, Gary, I'm going to answer that question for Gary, because one of the things that I was really excited about, even as a producer of the album, right, or as a, you know, on, on that part of it was, I, I believed, 
you know, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm gonna have to embarrass him a little because he's on the call, but he, you have to pretend he's not here. I also, I believe that like, we all played really well on the album. The band is the band, but I think vocally, I think this is Gary's, you know, masterpiece vocally to me. Yeah. He's saying well on all the other albums. He's Gary. He does what he does. But I think when I listen to these songs, I still get almost distracted at the performances and his range from the low stuff to the high stuff, to different characters, to different everything. I, I think this is his best vocal album mm -hmm. on extreme ever per personally. You know? Okay. And I didn't have to, I didn't have to pay him to say that. So that's good. <laughs> So guys, uh, I'm running out of time. Kina said it's my last question. <laughs> it's uh, well. So, how, what what the when the album came out? Come out on 9 of June, I think it's 9 of June. Yep. That's correct. Yes. Yep. Um, what people can expect to hear? Not only about rock and roll. I mean the whole concept of the album? Uh, well, I'm sure Nuno will add to this, but um, one thing I think did, we've already, we've already released a few songs, um, some modern sounds to it. Um, there are definitely some classic extreme pop songs on there that the familiarity between uh, Nuno, Pat, and myself, the harmonies, obviously, obviously the guitars. But I think at the end of the day, it's it's the songs. I think, like Nuno said, uh, we feel this is a very strong effort by the band, and I think I think we're gonna uh, surprise a lot of new fans and um, make a lot of old fans happy. I mean, Nuno? yeah, yeah. I, look, it, Gary, that, that's pretty much Gary nailed it, and I think. It's always an extreme fan. I think extreme fans know what's coming, even though they don't, they know, they know that the surprises and maybe some things on there that maybe, you know, we might've touched for the first time. And, but, you know, you can never be fooled by one, two or three extreme songs. As you know, with three sides, it takes, it takes, you have to have an affair with the whole album to understand what the album's about. Okay. Guys, thanks so much for your time. It was a real pleasure. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. We'll see you there. Yeah, thanks so much. Looking forward to it. Thanks. All right, cheers. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.